Welcome back to Cinema Wellman. I am your host, David. And today we're going to do a quick spoiler alert episode, second in the series, ruining all those gambling movies that I highlighted last week in the Bets Pictures episode. I figured no better time than the present. I realized that we we just introduced this spoiler alert segment a few episodes ago, but you know, the production crew, we talked about it and we said, yeah, uh, you just did all those gambling movies, tell the people uh, what happened. So as I said, no better time than the present. Uh, now, I didn't want to just straight up tell you what happens in all these movies, so I'm going to switch things up a little bit and I'm going to turn today's spoiler alert episode into a quiz of sorts of the 10 films that I'm going to spoil. Uh, six of them have multiple choice questions for you. Uh, so it's a quiz, and I'm going to give you three different endings. Uh, it's a quiz that you can, um, you know, bet on. Um, one of the things I miss most about being a teacher is making up quizzes and tests. And my students always enjoyed them since they never knew what to expect, and the, their names frequently appeared in the questions and, and the choices. So today, uh, you get a quiz. I once gave them a quiz that was uh, uh, 25 multiple choice questions, and they were all C. And nobody passed. But they're not all C today, so we're going to mix it up. For each movie spoiled in this quiz fashion, I will provide you with three possible endings, outcomes, resolutions, etc. It's up to you to pick the correct answer. Uh, Since I just spoke about these films in detail last week, I won't do any recap or anything. I'll head right to the spoilers. If you missed last week's Bets Pictures episode... I'm not quite sure what you're doing here, but welcome nonetheless, and place those bets, and let's begin with Rounders from 1998. Here are your choices. A, Mike, Matt Damon, loses to Teddy KGB and is now banned from Teddy's game for life. To no one's surprise, Worm, Edward Norton, goes back to prison. Your B choice, Mike beats Teddy KGB, who's infuriated by this and has his henchmen beat Mike up and leave him in an alley. The C choice, Mike beats Teddy KGB in the big game. Mike then tries to reconcile with his girlfriend, but everyone still loses. What do you think the answer to that is? What's the ending? The answer is C. Now, I just said that they're not all C. This one's C. We have a winner, kind of. Not sure if this is a happy ending or not, but since, you know, we have nobody to root for, so I'm on the fence, but it's it's fine. Um, so a winner. Give the man his money. I'm not making that up. Uh, California Split from 1974. No quiz for the next two movies, just spoilers. California Split, Bill, George Siegel, wins a ton of money, but he really doesn't feel anything. He doesn't have that, he calls it that special feeling that he's been chasing for this entire time. Uh, So he walks away from the gambling life. Bill is apparently one of the lucky ones. Next, we have from 1999, Croupier. Jack, Clive Owen, is planning to take part in the casino robbery, uh, but his girlfriend foils that plan by withholding important information from him. The robbery fails. Jack's girlfriend is later killed in a hit-and-run accident. Jack does publish his book, and it's a big success. Unfortunately, this success doesn't bring Jack happiness. He changes nothing about his life. He continues to work as a croupier, and he doesn't even move out of his little flat. Nothing in life gives Jack any satisfaction. You might see a theme here. Next, from 2017, we have Molly's Game. Now, when we last left Molly, she was in a heap of trouble. Let's see how she did. Here are your choices. A, Molly is caught and goes on trial. She pleads guilty, but the judge is lenient on her. She is put on probation, sentenced to 200 hours of community service, fined $200,000, and is subjected to periodic drug testing. The B choice. Molly is caught and goes to trial. She pleads not guilty, is found guilty, and is sentenced to 25 years in prison. Your C choice. Molly is caught, but the FBI doesn't have enough evidence to bring the case to trial. 
Molly skates on this and continues to run her games illegally to this day. So we get caught and kind of guilty, slap on the wrist. We get caught and prison, and we get caught and released. Catch and release. The answer is A, and I was surprised at this ending, but it's a true story. When I first saw it, I was like, really? Is this how they figured this out? Uh, I thought they'd want to punish her severely to make an example out of her, but I guess you know, rich people tend to escape punishment uh, better than the rest of us. Next, from 1940, Bob Le Flambeur, Bob the High Roller. Here are your choices. Remember, he was, uh, he was a gambler who has, uh, he's down on his luck, aren't they all? And decides to, he and his gang, rob a casino. Here are your choices. A, the casino robbery is a success. Bob and his gang get away with buku bucks. B, on the day of the robbery, Bob gets distracted by gambling at the casino and misses the meetup time with his gang. They are intercepted by the police, and his friend is shot and killed. Bob will be going to prison. Lady Luck, his mistress, made him forget. And the C choice. Bob and his gang attempt to rob the casino, but it's a total disaster. Several of the gang are killed, including Bob. So how do you think Bob Le Flambeur ended? Well, the answer is B. And now I'm going to go teach her on you. I included a quote from the film, which kind of should have said, well, why would he include that if that wasn't the choice? Lady Luck, his mistress, made him forget. And that's why I included it in there. Anyway, so the answer is B. Poor Bob. Everything's set to go on the big day. And he starts gambling. And to make things worse, he's winning. And this makes him stay and he misses the deadline, causing all of the misfortune that follows. The high roller has finally stopped rolling. Next, another one without a quiz. It's The Cooler from 2003. Uh, remember Bernie, William H. Macy? And uh, he's such bad luck that all he has to do is stand next to somebody in the casino that's winning, and they will lose. Uh, so Bernie barely escapes with his life at the end of this film. He wants to get out of this dismal existence that he has, but Shelley, Alec Baldwin, who's terrifying again, wants him to stay. So Bernie's deadbeat son, severely beaten by Shelley, lead pipe, it's brutal, uh, for cheating at the casino, and Bernie and Natalie get away at the end with pretty much nothing. <laughs> that one's grim. Uh, next, from 1961, The Hustler. Remember Fast Eddie Felson and, and Minnesota Fats. Here are your choices. The A choice. Eddie, Paul Newman, goes to Fats, Jackie Gleason, with his last $3,000 and asks for one game. Fats obliges and beats Eddie like he did before, leaving Eddie with nothing. Your B choice. Eddie plays Fats again and beats Fats. Eddie is now the king of the pool hall and is expected to take on all challengers. C. Eddie plays Fats again and Fats quits. Eddie is the champ, but Bert, played by George C. Scott in a tremendous performance, and he's amazing, George C. Scott. Uh, his character, Bert, still owns Eddie. Eddie refuses to work with Bert, it's the guy that broke his thumbs, and says that they'll have to kill him this time. Bert reluctantly lets Eddie off the hook, but tells Eddie that he can never step foot in a big-time pool hall again. And what's the answer? The answer is C. I gave that one away. I gave There was way too much detail in that choice, so that is the answer. Eddie does bring his last $3,000 to the pool hall. He does find Fats. He does challenge him to one game. He suggests that Fats beats him quickly to get it over with and put him out of his misery. Um... Eddie ends up playing magnificently, causing Fats to give up. And Fats says, I can't beat you, kid. Eddie's elation doesn't last long as Bert steps in. Eddie won the match, but he ends up a loser. Next, from 1965, is the Cincinnati Kid. Remember Steve McQueen, Edward G. Robinson, the poker game. 
in old time uh, 1930s New Orleans. Uh, here are your choices. How, how does the Cincinnati kid end? A, the kid, Steve McQueen, plays Lancey Howard, Edward G. Robinson, in a marathon poker game and wins the last hand. The kid is now the recognized champion of the poker table in all of New Orleans. Your B choice. Lancey Howard beats the kid in an all-in game. The kid has nothing now. He lost it all. He even loses pitching pennies with the kid in the alley that we've seen beat him beat previously. C choice. That might have been too much information. C choice. The kid is losing to Lancey and becoming desperate. He decides to cheat, but is caught. The game is forfeited and the kid's reputation is ruined. He'll never play again. What's the answer? Well, you know the kid's not going to cheat. He'd rather lose, and lose he does. Uh, the answer is B. This devastated me when I first saw it as a kid. I couldn't believe a movie could end like this. How could the kid lose it and lose it all? He was a decent guy. We were rooting for him. How could he be the loser at the end of this movie? Was it because he took Anne Margaret to that cockfight? That might have been it. All right, next from 2003, Uncut Gems. And this is the, I, I think, the spoiler of all spoilers because this was shocking. Uh, I do want to mention that the directors of this film attended my alma mater, Boston University. Uh, and this is by far the best movie I've ever seen by anyone who went to BU. There's a middle finger in there somewhere for someone. Um, Larry knows who it is. It's not Larry. Here are your choices. How does Uncut Gems end? A. Howard, Adam Sandler, wins the bet. He now has enough money to pay back the scary Russians he owes. Howard is lucky to get out of this alive and vows to quit gambling. The last shot in the film, however, shows Howard calling in another bet. So he's never quite out of it. Here's your B choice. Howard loses the bet. He also loses his, he loses his family. His wife leaves him. He loses his house, uh, his jewelry store, his place of business, uh, and everything else that he has of value. Howard has nothing left to lose or bet with. And the C choice, Howard wins the bet. He's now up $1.2 million dollars and can pay everyone back. When he opens the security door and lets the Russians back into the shop, one of the thugs shoots him in the face and kills him. What is the answer? Yeah, it's C. And that's how this frantic, chaotic, frenzied film ends. I saw uncut gems in the theater and when this happened, I was totally shocked. I mean, my jaw, my, my jaw, I was like, my mouth was open probably until I got home. Um, and the way it's shot is brilliant because there's really no lead up to it at all. It happens quite quickly. Uh, Howard lets the guys back into the shop. He's all pumped up that he won. These guys get their money and bang, Howard's dead. And that's how quickly things can turn when you're in so deep. It's a, I think it's a great film. I love it. Um, and lastly, and never least, The Sting from 1973. Now, I'm pretty sure that everyone has seen this Best Picture winner at some point. And if you haven't, you need to. Um, but there's no quiz here. So to remind you, Henry and Johnny, uh, Henry, Paul Newman, and Johnny, Robert Redford, pull off the big con in a very stylish way and take Lonigan, Robert Shaw, for everything he has. There's a nice twist at the end where you think they shoot each other, but I didn't even fall for that con the first time I saw this as an 11-year-old. No way do you kill Newman and Redford. Not in this movie, at least. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for our second spoiler alert episode. How'd you do with those six questions? I set the over-under at three. 
and I took the over. So, hope you did well. More spoiler alert episodes to come uh, once we have more movies to spoil for you. Join us next week right here at Cinema Wellman for the best and worst of our May screenings right here. And until then, take care.